Hey YouTube, welcome back to the Blades to Be Shop and another project video. Should be a pretty quick video today. What I need to do is add a coolant wash down hose to my Tormach 1100 MX. So now that I got a project done, I've got it full of chips in there, I really do need an easier way to be able to spray it down, clean it up a little bit. So that's what I'm gonna do today. So I don't think it's gonna take too long to do that. There's already a T back there at the start coming out of the coolant pump. So I've got a plug in that that came from Tormach. I should have an easy place to add in. I believe that T is probably for adding the fog buster coolant system, but I'm gonna go ahead and use that to add a wash down hose. Purchased a couple parts. We'll take a look at those here in a moment. Just gonna tap into that T, route some hose inside. Got a turn off valve, make sure I'll be able to turn off the spray hose when I'm not using it. And I'm just gonna use airline. So again, we'll look at these parts in a moment here and we'll see if all of that is gonna work for us. Before we jump into that, I also want to add in a quick update from the last video. So on my last video, I talked about this maximum of 100,000 lines of code. I actually interpreted that wrong, so thank you to TDG911 for making a comment on the last video, prompted me to go in there and take a better look at that code, read it, understand it, look it up a little bit more, and uh, it's not what I thought it was. So we're going to take a look at that here in a moment as well. Uh, so those are the two things we're going to cover. Again, should be a pretty quick video. For those of you already subscribed to the channel, hey, I sure appreciate you subscribing and watching these videos. Haven't had a chance to subscribe yet? Now's a good time. Go ahead, hit that subscribe button, hit a like on the video, drop a comment in there. Make sure you know when the next video comes out. All right, let's turn this around. Let's take a look at some code real quick, and then we'll go check out some parts. All right, so I went back in and I reloaded the full program I ran in my last video making that Blades to Be sign and logo. And when I loaded the program, it said you exceeded 100,000 motion lines, displayed extents may not be accurate. You know, I didn't really understand the rest of what I was reading on here. As I went and Googled it, looked it up after being prompted to do so, what this is really telling me is that it has only previewed and looked at the tool paths out to 100,000 lines. It's only looking ahead 100,000 lines at a time when it's thinking about motion paths. So there's two different ways that I can fix it. We can go to the main tab. I can either type in admin set preview limit and I can extend that preview limit. I could put that out to 200,000. In this case, I would only have to put it out to about 150,000 and that would look far enough ahead to see all of my code. So I could do that. The only drawback to doing that is when you do load bigger code in the future, bigger programs, it may slow down or may take it a little bit longer to load those programs. That's why they've set it at 100,000. The other thing that they have added to save you having to update this is you can just go in there and it gives you all the instructions right here if you understand what you're reading, which at the time I didn't. I think I'm learning a little bit more here every time. So I can just go in there and I can say, hey, load all preview lines. So let's take a look at what that looks like. We just go to that main tab, click on the menu, load all preview lines and now we go to the status tab so now we look at the timestamps on here. So last time I loaded that code 10 minutes ago and I got these warnings. It was giving me the 100,000 lines. Displayed extents may not be accurate. At 1351, it just reloaded the program. And now all it has done, it has disabled the G-code colors due to larger file size for better performance. So I misspoke in the last video saying that you can't exceed 100,000 lines of code. That is not the case at all. You can have, I don't know what the total number of lines of code is. Not sure if there is a limit. Uh, this just tells you how far ahead it's looking and some different things you can do to understand that and work around. Thanks for the uh, prompt to look that up. Hopefully that gives you all some better, more accurate information when it comes to uh, how this runs code. That also helps me because, as I told you in the last video, this ran fine in the Pathpilot hub and now I understand why it ran fine. If you know you're within your parameters, you don't even have to do anything. You can just run your code. This just lets you go ahead and check. Hopefully that makes sense. Let's go over here and let's get started on this spray nozzle. Here's the parts list I put together to get this project done. We've got some more half inch pneumatic line here to run out of that uh, T-joint that I already have. We'll just come up around the corner. This should be a match to the coolant line that is already on the machine, came with the machine. So once we end that, we're gonna end that with a compression fitting and then go to some quarter inch threads put in a ball valve just to make sure that while I'm running coolant on the machine, I can really shut this off and not just trust the nozzle at the end of the hose. So we'll transition to that. And then we're gonna go into some flexible line that we can run inside the machine so that this is tucked up out of the way and not dangling in the way when we're just in there cutting. So 
I went down to quarter inch airline. This was half inch OD. This is quarter inch ID. So this is probably a little bit smaller. Hopefully it still puts out enough volume that it'll give us what we need. And rather than a traditional spray nozzle, I just went with this uh, air nozzle to go on the end. It's gonna attach nice and easy to this air hose. So I'm not sure how effective this will be. If I need to, I can buy some additional fittings and go to a traditional garden hose type of an end and put on a, a traditional garden hose spray nozzle. But this neck's down small enough. I think this is gonna give us a pretty decent jet spray, but we'll see, we may have to modify that. And a couple of additional compression fittings. Mostly what I need out of here is just a 90 degree elbow. But on Amazon, I got this whole set for $9.99. And looking online, sometimes you're paying uh, six, seven dollars just for one fitting by itself. So it seemed like a pretty good buy to get a set of uh, eight fittings here for $9. And just a couple of wire hangers that are half inch. So up in the ceiling of the machine, there's a couple of screws left over from where you can attach the zip strip mounting brackets for the lights that are up on top. And I'm just gonna go in from underneath and secure these in place. Secure two of those, and I'm thinking that I should be able to put another one. I'm just gonna put a big zip strip loop hanging down, and I think that should give me a nice, uh, put a big zip strip loop. I think that'll give me a nice hanger where we can just hang this hose from the ceiling. Should be nice and out of the way. So that's the plan. Let's take a look here and let's start running this off the back of the machine and then we will see how that transitions inside. All right, on this other piece here, I believe it's about yeah, pretty close to three inches long. So we'll go with something, I think we can go with about a two and a half inch piece. Should give us a nice elbow out of there. All right, I know I've run coolant, so Hopefully not too much comes out of here. Just a couple of drops, not bad at all. all right, I'm gonna route this piece up the top and I'm gonna route it through the lift hook up on the top of the machine. Give me a nice, good, solid place to secure it to. We'll come back and cut this to length and hook it up here after. Get these all nice and snug together. All right, one end of this has a swivel, one does not. So we're gonna put the non-swivel down here. All right, we'll put our gun on after. One less thing to manage when we get in there. So that should be good. So we're gonna mount that up to the ceiling. We'll have our on-off valve there, and that should work. I think that turned out all right in there. Got it clamped to the ceiling in a couple places. 
Just used a couple of zip strips to be able to hang that. We've got a valve up there to turn it on and off. Let's go back around the back side and finish hooking that up, see how it runs. All right, so there's a valve up here on the coolant so I can shut the coolant off when I want to use the sprayer to make sure it's not going to come out there. So I have that valve shut off. Let me open the valve on the coolant up there. And let's turn on coolant. Let's see how this runs. Okay, now I've got one little drip up top. It's not a ton of pressure, but it's definitely giving me enough flow that I can rinse away these chips and I can clean the machine. And this is after it's been sitting for a week and all those chips are super dried up on there. So if I were to clean it right after I ran it, I think it would work significantly better in rinsing those away. I'll try and tighten that fitting up top there a little bit. Otherwise, we have a coolant sprayer. About 15 minutes to plug that in and get it going. And that should work quite well for us. YouTube, that's a wrap on another project here in the Blades to Be shop. Appreciate you joining us. Hope you enjoyed seeing a little update on that 100,000 lines of code that we talked about on our last project making that sign. Updated, did a little bit of research. So good learning for me. Happy to pass that along and share. Hopefully that helps you out as well. And also had a chance to go through and hook up a coolant washdown hose on this Tormach 1100MX. Regardless of what CNC machine you have, a coolant washdown hose I think is pretty much a necessity as I'm getting into this. So glad it was easy to hook up. Only took us about 10 or 15 minutes. Pretty minimal parts list to get Get that done so hopefully that gave you some ideas some thoughts on how you can do that for your own machine as well for those of you subscribed to the channel sure appreciate you watching these videos appreciate the comments and the likes that you're putting in there if you haven't had a chance to subscribe yet now's a great time go ahead hit that subscribe button make sure you know exactly when our next video is coming out the next one out is going to be on this rc jet mounted on a scooter pretty fun project you're not going to want to miss that one until next time i hope you're out in your own shop working on some projects of your own making some chips of your own maybe doing some machine maintenance like we did here today here in the blades to be shop we'll be working on something we'll be working on that next video as well so look forward to seeing you soon until then take care